My guest today is a Wall Street legend who called the dot-com crash, the 08 financial crisis, and the COVID-19 market rebound. So much so that CNBC actually dubbed him the prophet. He's now urging us to pay attention to an initiative Jeff Bezos started years ago. He's dubbing it Amazon Helios and says it could soon impact the food you eat, the water you drink, the places you live and work, and even the prices you pay for everything from airfare, gas, electricity, and household goods. Joining me today, Whitney Tilson. He's the lead analyst for Stansbury Investment Advisory, and he's also running to be the mayor of New York City, which, of yeah. course, I will get to. But first and foremost, Whitney, welcome to the show. Nice to see you again. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, look, I was, you know, I, I watched uh, the video uh, where you spoke about this Amazon Helios. This is a term you've come up with, correct? Yes. And um, Helios. Helios, uh, Helios uh, is uh, refers to the ancient Greek word referring to the sun. Right. The Greek god of sun, if I got that correct, right? Yes. Now, uh, everyone is saying this is going to be bigger, possibly, than the Industrial Revolution bigger than AI and will absolutely change how we live our lives. What can you tell us about Amazon Helios, Whitney? Right. Well, Amazon Helios is a, is a term for nuclear, nuclear fusion. And uh, many people will confuse this with nuclear fission, um, which is the process through which all nuclear power plants around the world use is splitting atoms. Fusion is a newer, more powerful emerging technology that combines rather than splits atoms. And it unlocks 20 to 100 million times more energy than traditional energy uh, sources like coal or oil or gas. And um, it's uh, the core input uh, isn't difficult to mine uranium, et cetera, et cetera, um, like uh, nuclear, current nuclear plants use, but in fact is hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. So um, I am convinced, and my team and I have done a lot of research on this that's captured in, um, uh, on our website and in a video that I trust you can link to, uh, yes. that shows why we think uh, this will unleash uh, nearly abundant, uh, cost-free energy that could transform humanity in, in an incredible way. Wow. I mean, so many questions, obviously. But of course, the folks want to know, how would this impact their day-to-day -day life? Like, can you give us examples of where we, we, where we would see noticeable differences? Right. Well, energy, um, you know, uh, is the root of all humanity and all, you know, you can track going back to the dawn of time. Uh, the growth in energy tracks the growth in human population and civilization and standards. But just, you know, imagine uh, virtually free, unlimited energy in terms of, you know, transportation, um, use of the Internet, the rise of AI. And there's a very interesting synergy here to develop nuclear fusion into something commercial. Um, AI will be using AI will really accelerate the science here. But then also AI is an enormous consumer of energy and one of the growth barriers. And the reason you see all these power plants going up everywhere and the price of electricity rising is because of how much energy AI consumes. So, you know, it's a it's a circular benefit here in that the uh, energy, uh, the low cost abundant energy that will be released by the development of fusion will also help AI, uh, which will come from the technology will be developed in part by using AI, will then in turn fuel the rise of AI. Why is Jeff Bezos at the forefront of it all? Um, uh, he is uh, a pioneer um, and sees opportunities and, and that's how he's become one of the world's richest men. Um, you know, look at, you know, starting Amazon, seeing the opportunity for Amazon, then seeing that it could be the everything store, not just books, and then seeing, for example, Amazon Web Services. He's uh, just an incredible visionary as to you know, where things are going in the long term and investing in them. And so it's not surprising that he and other tech titans like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg have identified this as an area. Uh, Vinod Khosla, uh, or the famous venture capitalist, one of the early investors in Google, for example, 
Um, uh, a lot of the smartest, most visionary and successful uh, people in the world uh, see the same things I'm seeing. So it basically, like you said, not using anything like uranium, but powering, powering using what the sun produces, correct? Right. And, and uh, hydrogen, uh, which, you know, H2O, uh, two, two elements of hydrogen, one unit of uh, oxygen, uh, you know, turn, is water. So uh, hydrogen, in, and it's in, in the air we breathe, of course, uh, the most abundant element. So um, that's what's so exciting about this. How far out do you think we are from, from seeing this? It's hard to know exactly, but it, you know, at one point people were thinking decades and now we're thinking years. Uh, there was a breakthrough less than a year and a half ago at Lawrence Livermore Labs. Um, and there are uh, a number of companies, uh, many of them private, uh, most of them private at this point, um, that are um, taking advantage of this um, and uh, developing the technology and using AI to do so. And so uh, I think we're talking, you know, not this year or next year, but we're talking years, not decades. Obviously, you know, to say it's going to be a disruptor is an understatement, but I want to understand, I know you can't, you know, share the, the stocks. You have to sign up to Amazon Helios, Helios.com for that. But who wins, who loses in this scenario? Well, I think uh, the traditional energy companies um, and, uh, you know, the producers uh, of oil, gas, coal uh, are the big losers if energy uh, becomes, uh, if fusion you know, un un unlocks uh, traditional energy. Uh, and the winners are basically everybody, everybody else, you know, 99% of humanity and, and uh, companies out there. How does this play into government's agenda who are racing to get to net zero? Does it aid their cause or no? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because this is also, you know, uh, very uh, environmentally friendly. And, you know, net zero re means reducing carbon emissions, i.e. the burning of traditional fossil fuels. And um, so this, um, uh, I can't think of a better uh, way to get there than, than uh, adopting and developing this technology. How about what we just saw in Spain, uh, Whitney, right? The power outage, yeah. the, the historic proportions. Would a technology, and I don't even know if that's the correct word, of this sort uh, basically eliminate any future power outages? I mean, would it keep, keep us safe on grids? Right. Um, you know, I don't, um, I'm, I'm not sure they fully uh, dis, uh, know what happened in Spain and Portugal, but um, clearly when you shut down your nuclear power plants uh, and then you uh, rely on wind and solar and you have disruptions. The wind doesn't blow, uh, for example, and of course solar if it's cloudy right. or whatever. Um, so this is massively better than other unreliable sources of green energy. You know, it's, it's on all the time. So if folks sign up at Amazon, Helios.com, they'll get the stocks you've identified that you believe will be winners during this revolution? Yes. yes. Um, we, um, anyone who, who signs up and simply watches the video, we give away a uh, stock pick uh, for uh, a larger company that owns a stake in one of the most promising private companies uh, 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 out there. And then... Um, if uh, people are compelled and want to sign up for our service, uh, it includes three special reports uh, with a half dozen stocks. Um, the titles of the reports are the Nuclear Fusion Trailblazer. The second one is called the AI Speculation, how to make 500% gains in the next few years. And then the third is New Nuclear Top Stocks for the Future of Energy. You know, having worked at Stansbury, I, I understand the, the amount of research and teams it takes to to, to undertake such a task, but how did this come on your radar? Can you tell us a little bit about the backstory? Yeah, um, well, I've been following Jeff Bezos for a lot of years and anything he invests in. Uh, there has been some media around this, uh, but I've got an incredible team uh, that I give most of the credit to uh, that has, uh, has a background in the energy sector and follows all the latest developments. And so uh, that's the key. Uh, all credit to them. And like I said at the start, you, during all this, 
you're also running uh, to help clean up New York City, hoping to become mayor of the city. Why would you want that job, Whitney? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I've lived in the city now for 31 years, uh, raised yeah. uh, three daughters here with my wife and have grown to love the city. I'm very concerned that it's going in the wrong direction. And when I looked at the field last November, when I decided to throw my hat in the ring, uh, I saw sort of a bunch of career politicians owned by the special interests in this city. And I look back to um, almost a dozen years ago, when Mike Bloomberg, an outsider, a business person who didn't need the job, was our mayor for 12 years. And I thought he was one of our greatest mayors. And mm -hmm. I would, um, you know, be looking to follow in his footsteps and just manage the city a lot better, uh, clean it up and and do what's right for all the people of New York, as opposed to the special interests who tend to own all the politicians in this yep. city. I have to agree with, with you, Whitney. When I moved to the city, Bloomberg was the mayor, and uh, I always felt safe, you know, coming in out of the subways, walking to and from work. And I cannot say that I feel that today. So if I had to ask you top three issues facing New York or just the major issue that you feel the city really has to deal with. Well, you mentioned uh, crime and safety. Uh, we had become one of the safest large cities in America as recently as five years ago. And then um, uh, we passed a lot of legislation that went too far, uh, that basically decriminalized low-level uh, offenses. Uh, the police stopped enforcing quality of life crimes. And that led to a, a surge not only in quality of life and people feeling unsafe, but it also led to a surge in uh, major crimes as well, up more than 30% in the last five years on average. So. Um, you know, changing that legislation, we're at a 34-year low in the number of police officers. We need to rebuild the, uh, the police force. Um, so that would be number one. And then secondly, the city's just become so unaffordable, particularly housing, and we've made it almost impossible to build yeah. new housing, to maintain our existing housing stock. So I would want to unleash uh, a wave of new construction by uh, fighting to change overly restrictive zoning codes and regulations and all. Uh, because trust me, people want to invest uh, in New York. Yes. Uh, we want to build real estate. We have the highest rents in the country and uh, they're still going up even though they're going down in the rest of the country. So we've just got to uh, make that a faster and less costly process. Amen to that. I wish you luck uh, with your run, Whitney. Uh, final question. Like I said, they dubbed you the prophet uh, for for your stock uh, picking record, right. track record. I, I, you know, I need to ask you where you think we go uh, with the markets here, specifically the S N P. What direction do you feel we're headed in? More pain. Yeah, um, I uh, came into the year uh, fairly cautious, just on valuation and. Um, uh, so I told people, look, just uh, it's OK to have take take some gains, sit on a lot of cash, but make sure you're getting paid more than four percent. Don't let it sit in your checking account earning zero. Um, you know, then as the market dropped almost 20 percent from its peak, you know, I think the Nasdaq was down almost around 30 percent. Um, I didn't um, I you know, maybe maybe there was a day or two in there where I could have been like, you know, it's time to back up the truck, but I yep. didn't quite get there because uh, uh, we started from such a high valuation point. But the most important thing I said is, is sit tight. Don't panic. Uh, these uh, what's roiling the market is actually not external shocks, but things that can be controlled and changed by the president, for example, uh, with the tweet. And sure enough, um, he he delayed or backed off. Uh, some of the things that were most roiling the market and the markets had a really hard rally where uh, s and now down only three or four percent this year. So uh, I'm still recommending sitting tight. If you own, uh, if you have an index fund with your retirement funds, if you own uh, good stocks, um, sit tight. Uh, I don't think it's a great environment to be buying, but you know, long term, the market's going to do going to do just fine. So we're sort of in a, a mushy middle right now. I would say <laughs> mushy I was, middle. I was getting pretty close to, you know, back up the truck. Uh, yeah. You know, at the lows a couple weeks ago, um, and uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll we'll get more opportunities. All right, Whitney Tilson, uh, you could learn more uh, about Whitney, Whitney by going to that link um, and learning more about Amazon Helios at 
amazonhelios.com. I learned something today. Whitney, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. We'll have more content coming your way. Sign up at the Daniela Convone show at daniellacombone.com and we'll see you soon. Hi everyone. If you're starting to question the system and want to protect what you have earned, you will want to download our free gold and silver protection guide. It's a clear, easy to follow resource that explains why gold and silver have stood the test of time and how they can help you build real financial security even as the dollar weakens. You'll learn about which metals to consider and the plan that best suits your needs, not Wall Street's. So click the link or scan the QR code to get started today. You're not going to regret it.